are you doing? So happy to have you here on our webinar today. Thank you for everybody who is here. So happy to see you. And if you're watching the recording, we're so glad that you are rewatching uh, this video. This should be a really fun time because I get to hang out with one of my dearest friends, Jeff Quincy, amazing coach amazing loan officer he's fantastic um but let's do a little housekeeping first here's what's going to happen today this is all about q a so what we'd like you to do you can either do one of two things if you have a question that you'd like to ask me or jeff raise your hand and the easiest way to do that is just to go over into your more and just raise your hand to get your reactions you can raise your hand or please go ahead and type it in the chat, not the Q&A. That would be really helpful for us to do if you could do it in chat rather than Q&A. And when you put it in chat, put it to everyone, not just host and panelists. Now, Jeff and I are going to be talking a lot and having a good old time here. So want to make sure that um, uh, that we don't miss anything. So Robin, our incredible director of operations, Robin Keeley. Robin, say hello. Hey, everyone. <laughs> There's Robin. We love Robin. She's going to be keeping an eye on the chat for us. And uh, if we need to break in, she can do that. But we have got some questions that have uh, been sent to us in advance. We've got some great questions from you guys in advance, as well as questions from you guys. So we're so happy to have you with us today for this Q&A. Now, some of you might be joining us for the first time and have no idea who I am. So I think I'll just let you know. My name is Cole Finley. And I'm the principal owner and a founder of Finley RE Coaching and Consulting, as well as a, a business, a performance, and a transformational coach and trainer. Um, I am a, have been a realtor since 2009. Gosh, I can't believe it's been 14 years now. It's incredible. Um, I have been managing real estate companies and coaching real estate agents since 20. 12. And at last count, I think I've actually coached around 1300 agents since in the last 11 years. So wow, it's just been incredible. Um, I'm an instructional designer with over 25 years of experience as course creator, trainer and coach. Yes, I am a coaching and training geek. And I am the chief architect of 12 weeks to breakthrough our training and coaching programs as well as our jumpstart program. And let me tell you all about my partner in crime for today, Mr. Jeff Quincy. So Jeff is with Green Home Loans, and he's phenomenal. You absolutely have to reach out to Jeff sometime. He's so great. So Jeff has built a successful mortgage business over the past 19 years by taking an educative approach with his clients and referral partners. His entire mission is to show clients how they can create generational wealth through real estate and their prospective financing options. Although this approach uh, takes more time in educating and explaining options, it is proven to create a lifetime clients and establishes him as a mortgage professional and not just an order taker. And he is also in Finliari. He is our market and our mortgage expert. Jeff, come on in here. How, you how are we doing today, everyone? <laughs> So good to see you, my friend. I always like it when we get to spend some time together. Likewise, likewise. This is always my favorite week of the month. I love it. I love it. Well, okay, so we are here to answer your questions. So um, if you have, first of all, what I'd love to know before we even get started in that, why don't you tell us where you're from? Everybody tell us where you are from. We've got a few of you around here, so that'll be good to know. Jeff, are you where are you from originally, by the way? I don't know that. A small town in South Dakota. Town of 500. Took three towns to make up our high school. Middle of nowhere. Seriously. Seriously. Oh, my. And I couldn't God. wait to get out of there. <laughs> Do you know, it's interesting. So I'm from Phoenix, Arizona. My graduating class in high school had 1,500 people in it. That was just my graduating class. We had 20. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and that was including me. <laughs> oh my goodness. My um, entire college had 1,200. The entire college had <laughs> I went to Arizona State University. We had like thousands and thousands. So it was really great. It was really great. Okay. Do me a favor, guys. If you have a question, um, love seeing all of your faces here today, guys. So do me a favor. If you have a burning question, 
And Tammy, I like that. I do, I don't. I had never heard of Noonan, Georgia, forty miles south of Atlanta. Um, and we got SoCal from Adele. You're from South, uh, uh, Southern California. Love it, Inland Empire. Love, love, love it. We're getting there. I like it. I like it. Okay, I love. Um, so Jeff, let's just kick it off. And we've got a great question from Linda. And maybe you and I, we're just going to bat it around a little bit. It says, we are constantly bombarded with lead generation sites and marketing com companies that promise and don't deliver. Wow. I got to tell you, Linda, that is such a common theme with so many real estate agents and real estate companies. It's just, they are constantly being sold things. Always, always, always. So I'm going to give you my take on it. And then Jeff, you maybe can, can jump in here for you. Mm -hmm. There's a lot of people who are going to try to sell you their thing. What you want to know every single time, Linda, and everybody who's listening here is what is their anticipated return on investment? You never want to spend money until you actually understand what the return on investment is. So a lot of times people will sell you everything from shopping cart um, marketing to magazines that you send out to a piece of technology. If they don't have metrics on that particular thing and they can't tell you what your return on your investment, your hard earned dollars is going to be, I'm going to tell you to steer clear. There are so many ways for you to be able to uh, generate clients, attract clients, uh, um, turn those clients uh, into an acquisition to where you can turn that into business. You do not have to spend tons of money when people are constantly trying to sell you things. Jeff, what do you think? Yeah, I, I call it the shiny object syndrome. And we get it on the mortgage side too, right? People are pitching us things left and right. Um, now, some of it's brand awareness, right? When we don't talk about leads, we talk about like you mentioned shopping carts. I get hit up for that once a month. And to your, I think you bring up a very valid point. You ask them for metrics, they're almost never going to have them. What you're going to hear is, oh, Sa Sally over here is in all the Safeways in the East Valley, and she just loves it because people recognize her. The downside of that type of marketing is you can't, you can never put an ROI on brand recognition. You have to determine what the purpose of that marketing is, mm -hmm. you know, and really sort through what is going to, what aligns with your business and what's going to bring you a return on investment. Absolutely. Love that. Love that. Um, Linda, is that kind of helping you? I know that Adele is saying it's, it can be overwhelming. You better believe it can be. Um, and that's really one of the things you want to always work with your coach. You know, it's interesting. My very first year in real estate, I spent a fortune, a fortune on all of these get, you know, um, rich quick kind of things as far as real estate goes. They didn't pan out. It was really when I learned how to um, do the, the things that are really foundational in my business that that started um, working out for sure. Okay. Mm -hmm. um, okay. So if you have more questions, please go ahead and put those in the chat. But Jeff, you, I think have got one that was submitted earlier. What you got? One that was submitted. And as a lender, I've been hearing this from the agents I work with over the last two weeks, very... Um, almost in every conversation, that is where are, where are rates going, right? When we talk about the market and um, it, it's hard to say, nobody can guarantee it. There was some news that came out today. I put it in my, my weekly rate update. Now you have inflation going higher over in Europe. The Bank of England is probably going to do more rate hikes. Their inflation is over 10%. Guys, biggest thing to understand and, and not something you're going to talk to clients about these um, international markets affect us, right? In a couple of weeks, we're going to have uh, first week of May, that first Wednesday will be the Fed meeting adjourning. They'll do their conference and we're expected to see another quarter percent hike. All fingers are crossed that it's the last hike they do. Um, and then right behind that, the following week, May 10th is when April's uh, inflation numbers come out and, and replace the 2022 April numbers. We know there's two main ones that they look at, core inflation, CPI, and those two numbers were both high in April 2022. So this has been circled on our calendar. If you've been on any of my webinars, you've heard me say May 10th, because we're expecting that the trend's going to continue where we're going to be plus 0.1, plus 0.2, but we're getting rid of some large 0.6 and 0.7 numbers from a year ago. So you're going to see inflation improve 
Um, in April, when the March inflation numbers came out, we went down from six to 5% uh, inflation. So that's already been a good, good movement. We've actually seen rates tick up over the last two weeks and everybody's like, why if inflation is finally getting under control? Very good reason for that. We know there's another Fed fund rate hike coming in a couple of weeks. Mm -hmm. um, after we get past that and then we head into summer, we expect to see rates slowly coming down over summer. All experts are still leading end of summer, beginning of Q3, um, seeing those rates get into that mid five range. Guys, the market's going to go crazy. Okay, so that is a great question. It's, it's the um, every conversation I'm having right now with clients and agents, this is coming up. And it's something we have to wrap our head around and get used to how to talk about it because as that happens, we're going to see our real estate market go crazy because the summertime is always a busy buying market anyways. Pair that with increased demand with lower rates. We got to be prepared for that. Mm -hmm. So that's, that's the short answer on where rates are going is we just got to be patient um, and we will see those come down. We Rates always chase inflation back down, always. Mm -hmm. So that will happen. Absolutely. And Jeff, you were actually inside of our groups. If you're a member of our Break Theory Facebook group, every single week, Jeff has a, a video that he posts in there all about the weekly market update. Am I right on that, Jeff? Correct. And Cole, you just brought up something I need to admit that I've been bad at is posting that into your Facebook group. So I will, when we get off this webinar today, post today's um, rate update okay. and I'll get that out. And I do a market update on Mondays. Mm -hmm. And by the way, guys, the one thing also to understand is Jeff uh, is a mortgage loan officer in Arizona, but he has connections throughout the entire country. And because he is our market expert and loan expert and coach, feel free to reach out to Jeff. Um, he can always, always uh, help you with things, connect you with people. So sometimes if you're not getting all the answers you want in your particular state, your particular city, whatever, Jeff is a great resource. All you have to do is simply um, just jump on our Facebook group. We can, uh, we uh, have his information posted in there. So you can absolutely take uh, advantage of just having a great conversation with him. And I learned something from him every single week. So I love that, Jeff. I love that. And the contact information in as well. Yeah, fantastic. Thanks for putting that in there, Jeff. And there's all of his information. Fantastic. Okay, here's another one that came in. Boy, this one is so, so popular. I want to use social media to build my business. What is the best way to go about doing that? Okay, this is one of my favorite topics of all time. Because so many people... They, what they do is they have a Facebook page and they try to post stuff on there and they're not getting any traction. If, is, if anybody's having that issue with your, you're doing social media, trying to do it and it's not panning out for you, do, many, do me a favor and say, not me in the chat. Just go ahead and put not me in the chat. I would love to see if you guys are having the same issue. Yep, see you guys are having the same issue again. Absolutely, absolutely. Okay, so let me share with you what the issue might be. All right, I'm gonna give you a few steps here. The very first thing that you wanna do is make sure that you have a consistent branding across all of your social media. So that's going to be your Facebook, your Instagram, your LinkedIn is always a really important one. If you have a YouTube channel, your YouTube, your TikTok, your website, it all has the same colors, the same theme, the same, 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 same. And the information that you put in there just about you, so all about you should be consistent and business related. The next thing is, and this is something that's really changed over the last year, guys, is that it's no longer about business pages. Those have kind of gone the way of the dodo bird. They're, they're really not the thing anymore because now on your personal profile, Facebook has done a really good job of hearing us when, when we use our personal um, page or personal profile to do business. So you can do a professional profile uh, in your um, Facebook now uh, and that allows you to have analytics. So that's going to be a really important thing to understand. Now, everything in social media is about algorithms. 
algorithms based there's so much content on facebook that facebook cannot possibly serve up everything to everybody so if you've got a lot of friends like for example i have three thousand friends in my facebook if i didn't understand how the algorithms worked and how that um, that connected to people then i really wouldn't be able to have people seeing my stuff so everything first of all is about content and the biggest thing to under about understand about content is that it should be the same theme throughout entire week of content. So if I'm going to post, let's say, um, for example, next week, I am really going to be posting about time and money when it comes to real estate, right? And so that's going to be a common theme. Then what you want to do to boost the algorithm is you want to post in as many ways as you can. For example, Maybe you're going to do a, a post that has the little colored background on it. By the way, that's better than pictures right now, that little colored background. If you're in Facebook, then you want to post a reel and maybe you have your Instagram reels connected to your Facebook. That's awesome. So the first day, maybe Monday is going to be your, um, uh, your two-step and your colored post. The second one is going to be a reel. The third one, maybe it's a testimonial from a client. The fourth one, maybe you do a short live stream about something going on in business. And then maybe you do another testimonial post. What we wanna do is as much different type of connecting as possible. And then the big one, and I'm gonna tell you, you wanna spend a half an hour every single day, but don't get caught up in it, liking and commenting on people's stuff. The more Facebook sees that you're liking and commenting on things, the more they see you being different, the more that you are seeing um, um, being consistent, the more that Facebook is going to reward you with their algorithm and serve your stuff up to more of the people who are in, on your Facebook friends. The next thing that you can do is start a Facebook group. Facebook is all about connecting people together. It's a social place. So groups are now really, really the big thing. Um, I will post, uh, maybe I'll just do another one of these live videos about doing groups, Jeff, maybe. Maybe that's that. the way we can go. Yeah. What's your take on yeah. some of this, Jeff? Well, I, I wrote some notes. If you guys see me looking off to the side, I'm always writing notes because I'm learning from Cole as well. Um, I would just add to it a couple of thoughts. Video, right? I started doing video. That's a huge thing. And everybody's always scared about it. Just do it. People want to see that you're human. They don't want to see that you're perfect, mm -hmm. right? So that, that attracts people just doing the video and seeing who you are in real life. Mm -hmm. um, a lot of the videos that you guys are going to see as I'm posting on Monday and Wednesday, or if you're in my um, database and getting those, is those are all one takes. I don't reshoot those. I've done some work for Cole where I've reshot a couple of times because it's going to be used over and over and over. But when I do my rate updates and I do my uh, market updates on Monday, it's one shot. I don't care if I mess up. And I had an agent a few weeks ago, I think I talked about this on last month's webinar, that said, in a conversation, I know I need to do video. It was me, her, and another agent who does a lot of video. And she's like, I know I need to do it. And she's like, I just don't want to mess up. I want to be perfect. And she's like, but and she, she figured out her own solution. She stopped and she's like, hold on. When we mess up on a phone call, we don't hang up the phone and then dial the person back again and say, sorry, I said the wrong <laughs> thing, right? So I why would that. we stop the video and reshoot it? Just be cute. So that was the first thing is, is getting video in as part of that. Cole kind of talked about that. And then systematic approach, right? Like we, um, people are watching us, right? So when I do my Monday and Wednesday updates, if I don't do that, the agent base that I work with that receives those is going to be like, oh, Jeff's off his game, right? And I talk about this a lot, non-negotiable. I didn't start doing them until I personally made it a non-negotiable in my business. So whatever that process is going to be on social media, you need to make it a non-negotiable in your business and then be systematic because people see that. And there's this subconscious part in their mind that this whole process that goes on that says, if Cole is so systematic with this, how is she going to be as my coach, right? If this agent is so systematic in their how are they going to be with my transaction? That's who I want handling it, right? Mm -hmm. It's why I work for the boss I work for. I interviewed with him. I knew based on production and volume, that's a guy I could glean some information from. Mm -hmm. And then when I left his office, there was a systematic approach to a text message and a phone call on certain days. And it made me go, if he is this systematic, 
with recruiting me, mm-hmm. how systematic is he in his marketing and his, and his loans that I can learn from, right? So that's what I would add to social media. Be very not non-negotiable, very systematic in how you do it. We'll mm-hmm. still be here. I love that. You know what? And I love, you know, I, I one thing I love, Jeff, is the thing I, I wanted to kind of diverge off a different topic for just a second. And it was interesting because Rob and I were having this really interesting conversation this morning, and it was about um, consistency and how you show up here is how you show up everywhere, right? So if you are consistent in your life, consistent in the things that you do, consistent in your business, you're going to be consistent everywhere. So if you consistently um, keep with your promises, you're going to keep those promises everywhere. If you are late all the time, you're going to be late everywhere in your life. If you are the type of person that tries to, you know, hope everything goes away and just doesn't, you know, you, you ignore it and hope things go away. Um, and so no one will see you sweat, then that happens everywhere. And by the way, your clients will start doing that to you too. If you're the type of person that has very consistent communication, you've probably got great communication with your kids, with school, with everything else. So it's about the habits that we really ingrain in ourselves. It is all about doing things at the highest level consistently. And I think that ties into what we were, you were just talking about, Jeff. Yeah. Yeah, and I'll, I'll add to that. I, I, I learned eight years ago through a personal growth um, seminar I went through. Mm-hmm. And they, they say it the exact same thing, but they say it different. The way you do one thing is the way you do everything. I see it show up in my life. Mm-hmm. If my car is dirty, because guys, I, I work 16 hours a day. I'm living out of my car most of the time, but I'll get home on a Saturday, a full day of work and just look around. I'm like, my car is dirty. Guess what? My house is dirty. My loan, my loans are scattered all over my desk. It, it filters through to everything. Mm-hmm. So you start cleaning that up, right? You clean your car out and all of a sudden the garage starts getting clean and then your house is clean and then your business is cleaned up. It is so true. The way you do, there's no way, and it, start picking this out when you talk to clients. Well, I'm bad with money, but when it comes to paying this bill, I'm great. It, it it doesn't work that way. You're either in tune with your finances or you're not in tune, right? So it's, it's a very true statement. And it's a great thing as a business owner to simply be mindful that that's how our brains work. Mm-hmm. So. Love it. Love it. Okay. Do make sure guys go ahead and post your questions in the comments below. Jeff, you got another one there, right? Yeah. It kind of ties into the first one, right? The Where are rates going always goes into the next topic of conversation um, and Jeff, how is that going to affect price home prices or maybe differently said, how is that going to affect the market? Mm-hmm. Well, I always, almost every call I'm having with clients right now, these questions are coming up and I go into, it's a simple economics econ 101 class that you would take in college, right? Mm-hmm. Supply and demand. Doesn't matter what you're selling. You're selling a widget or you're selling houses, supply and demand affects that. Mm-hmm. So Supply in our case is inventory. And this is gonna be different in every geographical area of the country, but if supply is measured by inventory, and I'll just use Arizona as an example, we were at 21,000 homes on the market in October. We are currently at 12,500. Supply is down. Demand can be measured by mortgage applications. Okay, since the beginning of the year, mortgage applications are up 27%. Why? Because rates are about a half a percent less than what they were at the beginning of the year. So demand's up, supply's down. Mm -hmm. What happens when that occurs? Prices go up, Mm -hmm. okay? So in your area, you might see some stagnant prices, a slight dip, maybe only one, two, 3% appreciation. Mm -hmm. But as soon as rates, if we're up 27% in mortgage applications, and that's a a mortgage bankers association stat, right? That's just not me pulling that out of thin air. That's measured um, by mortgage applications across the country. And if those are up 27% because of a half a percent drop, and we've actually moved up to conventional rates about seven, FHA about six and a half, imagine when those rates drop one and a half percent, demand's going to go through the roof. Yeah. So I always use this story. I tell clients, I'm on the phone, right? And I'll, I'll do this so I can verbally tell them what I'm doing. My left hand is demand, okay? Demand's super low coming out of COVID. So you, I'm going to take it out of the screen. This is inventory. This is supply super high coming out of COVID, right? Last year when rates went up. 
And then what happens is inventory starts coming down, my hand comes back in, demand starts going up, the window closes. And eventually what happened during COVID is they went this way, they, they invert it, right? Mm -hmm. And prices, you start seeing people uh, offering 50, $100,000 over list price, mm -hmm. crazy monopoly money, I would call it, from selling houses in other states. I don't think we're gonna go that crazy that things switch. Um, however, as that demand goes up and, and the seller is not sitting there waiting for one person to knock on their door with an offer and say, hey, what do you need to buy my house? I'll give you whatever makes it affordable. It's going to change. They're going to have four or five people. And hopefully we don't see $50,000 increases, but you're going to see two or three out of those five people are going to be willing to fight for that house. Mm -hmm. and they're going to offer five grand over, 10,000 over. So you're going to see prices go up. That leads into is now a good time to buy. My answer is always the same thing. Hey, I'm going to take my loan officer cap off because you know I'm a straight commission salesperson. And I don't want you to think that my advice is so that we can do a mortgage for you. We'll do a mortgage for you when you find the time is right for you and we'll do a good job. But right now, the sooner you buy, the better. Because do you want to be out there with everybody else? Yeah, you're going to have a lower interest rate, but do you want to be out there fighting against four other people and writing 30 offers on 30 homes to get your 5% interest rate? Or do you want to buy now and then let all those crazy people who are fighting drive up the value of the home you already own while you sit on the couch? And guys, I say this word for word probably three to four times a day. While you're sitting on the couch at home with a glass of wine going just taking care of our, in, our refinance and getting us that 5% rate. That picture looks way different. Look, we went through COVID. It, we, we did a lot of loans. We made a lot of money. And it wasn't fun. Buyer fatigue, right? Clients calling us, Jeff, we just wrote offer number 15 this weekend alone. We got beat out again. I don't want, I don't wish that on my worst enemy, mm -hmm. right? So it's not a sales tactic to, or, or creating fear to move people into buying. It's just the truth of what's going to happen. Do you want to pay somebody an extra 10, 20,000 or do you want to earn an extra 10 or 20,000 in appreciation? So that's my answer to that is how, how this movement is going to affect the market and prices, mm -hmm. you're going to see some craziness out there again. Yeah. You know, what, I, what, I, I, what I'm hearing as you're saying that, Jeff, is strategy. I think so many times real estate agents, they've just got a client. The client is in some type of an emotional situation, right? They're either really excited. They can't wait to get out. Or maybe they're really uh, have a lot of trepidation about the market, whatever it is. For us and being real estate agents, our best thing is to always have a strategy when it comes to those clients, understanding the market. And I love, Jeff, this, this squeeze thing. I thought that was just perfect. I wrote that down. Um, what we always want to make sure of is that we have a consistent strategy going into anything. And by the way, that comes to, uh, actually, here's an, our next question here, which I like. It says, and this goes into negotiation tactics. So it says, what are some effective negotiation tactics to ensure successful transactions for my clients? This posts right into what Jeff is saying. Um, everything is about a strategy. But if you were going to be going into any negotiation, first of all, it starts with your own client. You're always going to have negotiations with your own client because you want to make sure that you guys are on the same page. And I'm going to tell you this above all things in negotiations, it's about questions. The more questions you ask, the more answers you have, the more leverage you have. Never, never, never make an assumption with your own clients, with the agent on the other side, in a transaction, in multiple offers. You never, ever, ever make assumptions. For example, Let's say that you are going into a transaction and, and prices are going up and we're starting to go back into a seller's market again. And there's a house and there's going to be multiple offers on it. And you know that your client might need concessions. Well, we can't make the assumption that the other side will not accept concessions. It's a possibility that we have to look at for your particular client that they need concessions. The way I'm going to go about that is I'm going to go to that other agent and I'm going to start asking questions. What is the most important thing for your client? Now, sometimes the first word out of their mouth of price, then I'm going to ask a follow-up question. And what else? It's called the awe question, by the way, A-W-E. And what else? You ask 
the awe question as many times as you can until you figure that you've got enough information. So Jeff, let's say that I'm asking you a question, you're an agent on the other side, and you, you tell me that if price is the most important thing, and I'm going to ask, okay, great. And what else? And then he might uh, say, yeah, my client needs to be out in 30 days. I have a job transfer. Okay. In 30 days. So price 30 days. And what else? You know, I'm not going to share it with you, but they have a certain number that they need to net to make the move out of state work for them. Okay. Well, if you could share it with me and I promise to keep it secret, what would it be? Uh, I really shouldn't tell you this, but I mean, they, they literally need to, to net $60,000 for the move to work. Okay. Which then you're going to ask me a price. Uh, no, which I, I don't know I, what they owe. That's right. Yeah. I don't. Right. So I'm going to go into that. What I'm going to do is anyone else. Okay. So Jeff, you said price is the most important 30 days. They need to net 60 and what else? I'm going to, really it. because here's what I'm doing with Jeff, just to let you guys know in this negotiation, again, it's all about questions, is I am creating a relationship with him as we're having this conversation. Now, here's the thing. The calmest person in the room always wins. The person with the most information always wins. So if I can create a, a rapport with Jeff and we can have this um, uh, conversation, sometimes the highest purchase price is not necessarily going to buy it because I'm going to go and write my offer based on all the other things that he told me. Okay. Questions, mm -hmm. questions, questions. Now there are a lot of different techniques. And if you guys want, all you have to do is you can put this in the chat right now. I have a book out. It's on Amazon. Love it. It's called negotiations 101. I will be happy because you are here to send you a free copy. If you would like a free copy of Negotiations 101, um, do me a favor in the chat, ch chat or type in, I want one. And then we will get one over to you free of charge because I'm feeling generous there. It's awesome. I think it's mm -hmm. awesome. I'll, I'll add to the negotiating too is one of the pitfalls I'm hearing a lot of is you see the post on Facebook, you know, so some agent that you're tied to on Facebook posts and says, got five offers in one day, 10 grand over. We don't know if they list if their strategy was to list that low. So did they get, did they get ten grand over value or ten grand over of them. a low list price? Okay, so we got to dive into that. Or we hear people in the office say, "Oh my gosh, my last three buyers haven't been able to get anything because of multiple offers, not getting um, concessions." And then we take that as absolute. Mm -hmm. Okay talked about this a couple months ago because we had this happen where a client asked me about concessions for Q1 buy down. I said, hey, it's starting to slowly turn, but you've got to find the right seller. The agent, based on information they had heard in the office, gave an absolute answer that, you know what, we, we will not write an offer asking for concessions. We'll never get accepted. What happens is they fire the agent, they get a new one, puts me in a really uncomfortable situation as the lender. And they get the new agent who gets them under contract with what? Concessions. So you just gave an absolute answer to something that is not 100%. Now, could we say that almost absolute back during COVID? I mean, nobody was giving concessions. There, that was a pretty absolute time frame. So you got to be very careful of how the statements that come out of your mouth, how absolute they are, because you can lose clients that way when it comes to negotiating. And back to our role play, Cole. What happens if they need a net 60,000 and you get out of me as a listing agent that we literally only have $2,000 in wiggle room, but I know they're motivated. They got 30 days. Mm -hmm. Is there such a thing as offering 10 grand over and we all hope it appraises and then asking for 10,000 in concessions so we can help the seller win mm -hmm. and our buyer wins with a two, one buy down fund it mm -hmm. and saving four five, 600 bucks a month. Yeah. There's a way you can still do that and get the concessions even though there appears on the surface to be no room for concessions, no. right? So we got to think outside the box and, and minimize absolutes because they'll, they'll kill our business. Yeah, absolutely. And guys, what you're seeing here, do you see how Jeff and I, let's say that, uh, that I'm the agent and he's a mortgage loan officer, we can absolutely create a strategy for that client. It's just not me alone with my client, but if I've got an amazing lender like Jeff, 
he and I are working together and seeing what is the best way to move forward for that client. Partnership, partnership, partnership. Always think of those things. Yeah. We see it. You guys see it because I see it on Facebook all the time. Can you believe they accept this lower priced offer than what my clients were offering? Well, we don't have the full details. Mm -hmm. They might have asked for 10 grand less with nothing. You're giving the 10 grand more, but asking for 15 grand in concessions, you're netting the seller less. Your, your higher offer price meant nothing. In fact, it gave a little bit more guarantee to the appraise, the appraisal and the appraised value, mm -hmm. right? So you guys, you gotta know and see the full picture mm -hmm. um, to make those determinations. Love that. Love that. All right, Jeff, hey you got guys, another question? Yeah. Adela had a great comment. She goes, I always have this conversation with my sellers, letting them know price is not always number one. Terms are just as important. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. We we see and talk about that on the lending side all the time, right? Client calls me up and says, Jeff, I got a, an offer from another bank. You're at 6.875, they're at six and a half. And I'm, I don't care. It's just like price, right? <laughs> Interest rate's important. But my first question is, and what are they charging you for that? Mm -hmm. We just had a client, Spanish speaking, so they're working with my wife, saying that a, a big bank, I won't name their name, told them they were getting, giving them a $5,000 lender credit for this ridiculously low interest rate. So my wife has been coached by me, says we need the loan estimate. They turn it in. Their rate is low, about three-eighths lower than ours. They are not getting a $5,000 lender credit. They're being charged $5,800 for that rate. Mm. And we said, well, wow, if you really want to pay the $5,800, I don't suggest it. We'd actually be a quarter percent lower. See, so if you guys deal with a lot of the same things we do as, as lenders, rate's not the most important. It's what's the terms to get that rate. Mm -hmm. so, good, good point, Adela. Mm -hmm. You got another one there, Jeff? I think you've got one, right? Yeah, th this is brand new. Just in the last week, you probably see a lot of um, brokers posting this on Facebook, mortgage brokers, 40-year uh, mortgage, right? Be careful as real estate agents on what you put out there to get the phone to ring. Kind of goes back to what Cole said about 20 minutes ago. What you put out there is what you're going to get back. Mm -hmm. Okay. First of all, I have a list of 100 lenders, whether we're set up with them or not, that in a click of a button, I can run a rate quote. Not one of them is offering a 40-year mortgage right now. Okay. There's 40-year mortgages on loan modifications. And I think there will be a point in time to help with affordability that 40-year mortgages will come back. I ran a scenario on a $300,000 loan amount with somebody doing a 30-year or a 40-year. So, so the first misconception is it's not even available on the market right now. Um, when, it, when and if it comes available, then it's like, is that a good thing? Well, what's the benefit of a 15-year mortgage? Lower interest rate, right? Higher payment, but lower rates. So that's why a lot of people are enticed by 15. So the longer you go in term, the more exposure, exposure you just create it for the bank. Mm -hmm. The more exposure, the higher the rate. So when we go from 30 to 40 years, you're going to see a higher interest rate on that. When you take that 30-year interest rate and calculate a principal and interest payment compared to a 40-year, you're actually only saving somewhere between $10 to $20 a month. So lenders are using it. I will never... I don't operate this way, but they're using it to get the phone to ring for the client to be like, oh, a 40 year, it's going to be more affordable. Now they get them on the phone. I don't work that way because that's an uphill battle. Now imagine I'm the source of the information. I just create an uphill sales battle for myself. Imagine when you take that third party information as an agent and you post that on Facebook, say call and your whole intent is to get interest and for clients to call you. Call me about the 40 year mortgage. You'll make your payment cheaper. So they call and you get all these, these leads, all these contacts, and you send them over to your lender and he starts working through each one of those and talking to them. And then, oh, you're only saving 20 bucks. What's the first thing that client thinks? Mm -hmm. Bait and switch. It, bait, well, bait and switch. And did this agent really know what they were talking mm -hmm. about? They actually know that you used it to get them to reach out to you, right? And they're not happy. So the lender's not getting that business because they just delivered bad news. And more than likely that client, if they buy a house is not gonna use you as the agent, mm -hmm. right? So it goes back to just be very careful what you're putting out there. And it has it been vetted that it's actually a benefit and it's gonna make that mortgage more affordable. I see it with um, down payment assistance loans. You know, we have, we have a loan officer in our branch that promotes down payment assistance loans all day. And, 
And I'm up there a couple months ago and he's like, man, your, your average loan amounts are so good. You do so much more business than me. And what's going on? I'm like, you know, all I'm doing is pulling, he, he pulls 70 to 80 credit reports a month. I pull 30 and I close more loans. You know, so we look at that and we're like, man, you're working tw- twice, two and a half times as hard as me and getting half the results. Mm-hmm. But the simple answer, if you, you know, you might not want to hear the truth, but the simple answer is you're getting what you put out there, mm-hmm. right? Down payment assistance, low income, low assets, usually low credit scores, and a very small percentage of those people fit into the down payment assistance box. Mm-hmm. So just be mindful of what goes back to strategy. What marketing message are you putting out there? And are you attracting the client that you want? Mm, Love that. Love that so much. Okay. I got another one here, Jeff. I like this one. It says they're never, and boy, I'll bet you guys all will relate to this one. There never seems to to be enough time in the day to do everything I need to do for my clients. I struggle with being super busy and uh, with current clients. And then when their deals close, my pipeline has dried up. Help. (laughs) I love that. Lot to unpack there. Lot to unpack there. Okay. How many of you guys, you tell me, tell me, um, uh, I, I want you to, to, to type in the word ride. If you ride the roller coaster in your business. So you do a bunch of lead generation. It's awesome, awesome, awesome. You get some clients and then, oh my gosh, you are doing so much for them and the deal closes and then it starts doing the roller coaster. Has anybody ridden the roller coaster before in this business? Yeah, I know. <laughs> I'm going to raise both hands, two feet. <laughs> We've all done this before, right? It is absolutely, yeah, th- see, thanks guys. Absolutely guilty. <laughs> I love that. I love the comments when they come in. Um, Here's the thing, <clears throat> everything, and you have heard me say this well, probably three or four times now in just this webinar, strategy. Everything comes down to having a strategic plan that turns into an action plan that really gets translated into a time blocked calendar. Now it's interesting because sometimes we bring up the words time block calendar to clients and their first reaction is that it's a four letter word and then they don't want to hear it. The thing is, is that when you have a strategic plan and you understand the things that you should be doing during the day, that comes into an action plan, which it's that what will you be doing, doing during the day that's really going to keep your business predictable and sustainable. And then that stuff gets translated to a time block calendar. Here's, by the way, how I think of my time block calendar. I have a boss. My boss is my calendar. And I have a very strict boss. So if I have really worked out that strategy, that action, the action plan, and put that on my calendar, I will stop riding the roller coaster because here's what will happen. I'll have the things time blocked that are money generating in my business, which is always going to be our client acquisition strategies. Those happen the first point point of the day. I'm going to have my admin um, broken up into my calendar. I'm going to have my client meetings. It's going to be time blocked into my calendar. Now we all have things that happen. We understand that, but if I've got time blocking, I am much more likely to keep the business things flowing and doing the business itself. Most of the time when I am dealing with a client and they're they're running this this roller coaster, I will take, ask them to see their calendar. And when I see it, it is just all over the place. Lots of holes, lots of, I've got kids here and I've got soccer practice here and I've got to go do my Bible study here. And I've got, there's a whole lot of stuff on there, but it's not consistent. Here's the thing to understand, guys. A lot of you guys have had a J-O-B before. You weren't an entrepreneur. You were working for someone else. And that someone else is the person who dictated what your calendar looked like. You had to be at work at a certain time. There were meetings that had to be done. There were projects that had to get done. And someone else did that scheduling for you. When you're an entrepreneur, you must do the scheduling. Now, there is a method to the madness of how you set all that up. There's actually a strategy to do the strategy. Um, And I'll be happy to sit down with any of you and and take a look at that. But the biggest thing to understand is that you have a boss. Let the boss be your calendar and just adhere to it. What do you think, Jeff? 
Would you I have take? so much to add to this. This is this is my cup of tea and what I, and even in my branch, everybody knows. So we were on a, a Zoom with uh, Cole and Robin earlier and my boss, and he purposely set up his, his computer and his camera to show this email I had sent about two years ago to the branch. And it was a pretty heated email. I don't send these emails anymore because what they did is they went and um, put my picture and a bunch of other stuff and printed this life-size poster and it's posted in our, our office and it's embarrassing. I wasn't proud of what I said, but I was animated. It was about this topic. So I'm going to unpack this as quickly as I can. So I had a, my first boss in the mortgage business, not the smartest business person, but there was one main thing I gleaned from her in the two years I was with her. And, she, and, and we were doing internet leads. I had a pager. And the funny thing is, it wasn't even pager era. This was 2003. We had a home show um, and the leads came in through that. And my, I was the best converter. I was brand new, but I was hungry. So I had it on me at all times. And back then, nothing was done through email and fax. You met every client in the office. And I remember after like my fourth meeting of the day, and it was just low credit score. Nobody was approved. And I just felt like I was spinning my wheels. And I, she could see it on my face when I came out of the conference room. And she said, here's what I'm going to tell you, Jeff. Right now, you're overworked and you're underpaid. Mm -hmm. You just keep doing it and you keep taking care of people. And you'll eventually be underworked and overpaid. And you'll sit back one day. And be like, how in the world did I just make this much money this month for how little I worked? Okay, so that's the first piece that the foundation of, of my thoughts on this topic. And I remember that day, in my mind, I would have never said this out loud, but some choice words came to mind, right? Because I didn't want to hear it. And fast forward 10 years in my career, and that just always popped up as I started making good money. But one thing that I did was my work ethic. And if you guys have been on any of our webinars, I promise you've heard this story. I use the, the Home Depot analogy. When you get your real estate license, somebody just handed you the keys to your own Home Depot store. The question is, are you going to hire the right people? Are you going to manage your inventory? Inventory in that scenario would be your clients and your database. Mm -hmm. They're going to just show up and open the doors. Right? Some people don't show up and open the doors. We see it in the mortgage world. They show up at 10 and they go to lunch at 11 and then they leave at two because they're tired. It's been mm -hmm. a long day. Now, we, we have to say, if you got into real estate for the flexibility and you enjoy it and you want to help a client here or there, great. But when you get busy, don't let your customer service go down and have a backup that you can refer those people to. So I'm not, if that is you, I'm not talking to you. If your motivation to get into real estate or, you know, us on the lending side is to make a lot of money and create generational wealth for your family and give yourself some time and money freedom later in life. You're cutting yourself short to not have a schedule as if, you know, your calendar is your boss because you don't have somebody telling you to get to work. Mm -hmm. So does your day start? Do you have a system to your day? Does it start at eight one day, 10 the next day? We were in this mastermind about six, seven years ago. There's six loan officers and a marketing rep who was a very good coach, but she knew nothing about mortgages. And she'd always say, we'd always, she'd tell us stuff and we'd be like, but you don't understand. But she's big on time blocking. And one of our loan officers showed up to the mastermind one day and, and she, she held our feet to the fire. We had to set our goals each week and we didn't show up the next week with one, even one of those not completed. We were grilled. That wasn't a goal. That was a dream. Why didn't you get it done? And this, this loan officer shows up and none of her goals got touched. And she goes through the normal thing, just kind of berating her. We're, we're in a restaurant. We met at a restaurant and I'm just like, oh my gosh, let this poor gal off the hook. And she goes, well, what's your excuse this week? And the gal goes, well, my grandmother needed her house painted. So the whole reason why I'm in lending is so that I could just go do that. She said, no, 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 you have a job. Your schedule is what you set. Mm -hmm. If you had a job at a, a large bank, we had to check clock in, clock out, and your hours were eight to five, would you have painted your grandmother's house on a Tuesday? You would have told your grandma, I'll be over there Saturday, right? Okay. So I share that story because so so many of us, it's easy to get in and do that. And our, our results, often harsh, always fair, right? So if we're not getting the results, that, that paycheck that we want, we have to look in the mirror and say, did I do the effort to require the check that I wanted, not what I got? Mm -hmm. Now, the roller coaster part of it, and I'll wrap this up. The roller coaster is you got a time block. Use that calendar for prospecting. That's why the roller coaster happens is we get busy with two, three clients, 
and we quit prospecting because we're excited and we're already calculating our commissions and we're doing that. Mm -hmm. The prospecting has to continue at the same level. Whatever it took to get you those three clients has to continue while you have those three clients. And it's the hard, it's not easy. It's the hardest thing to manage, but you can do that through your calendar and make it work. So sorry, I kind of took off with that because it's just, I'm very passionate about that. That's okay. That's okay. Jeff, there's a, there's this uh, last question I think we've got, and, and I think this can, we can both tag team on this one just a little bit. So I'm going to start off with this one. It says, what are the most important things I should know about uh, for my business right now? Okay, it, so I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to throw some things out at you, but I want you guys to understand, and this, if you get nothing out of today, I want you to understand this. The world changed in February in the entire world. Something happened in February that is bigger than fire being discovered, that is bigger than electricity. And it is called AI, artificial intelligence. It has taken off to such an extraordinary extent and it will be affecting every single solitary part of our lives. You've got right now, Google, Microsoft, OpenAI, and Amazon all competing in this space and it's been blowing up like crazy. So the first thing you need to understand is if you are not on YouTube once a day learning about artificial intelligence, and I'm gonna tell you what you're gonna start with. You're gonna start off with something called chat GPT. GPT, chat GPT. So if you go to chat.openai, dot com you're going to find it it will blow your mind what's out there there's no more going to be the days of search that you had in um uh, when you just you googled something that is actually just about to go away because what you're able to do with chat gpt will blow your mind again you want to get on youtube and research it i'm probably going to do a uh, a video on this one because it's so important because it's so important as even a content creator. Now, a lot of you guys, we talk about, you need to do videos. You need to be posting content on your social media. The thing about it is any of the chats, chat GPT, or you have Bard from Google or what, whichever ones that are out there, you can actually create content with ask it a question and will actually create content for you. It can create a script for a reel. It can create a blog for you. There's so many different things that you now have. The agents who understand that right now are going to be winning the game. Everything is about digital right now. Everything is about understanding what's coming. If you're just sitting around and you're posting on your Facebook and you're hoping and praying and keeping your fingers crossed that somebody you're going to find a client, you're behind the times. So if you want to know more about that, guys, you can certainly check in with me. I'm going to give you my contact information here in just a minute. But everything is about that. It's about content creation. It's about video, all of those things in real estate. Now that's our world. If that's not a world that you can really commit to, I'm telling you, the world has changed. That's one thing you need to get on board. Yeah. What do you think, we just got the email from our, our boss this morning of a, a webinar specifically for mortgages mm-hmm. with chat GPT. Mm-hmm. It's um, guys, it's no different. I believe that in 2000, where all of a sudden to be a realtor and be successful, you had to have a website mm-hmm. with, with syndicate it through the MLS. Mm-hmm. If you didn't have that, they're like, how people, people are going to use your website to view homes. And if they're not, they're going to use somebody else's. I think this is, Cole is 100% correct. It is what's next. And if we don't get in front of it, we're going to be left in the dust. Yep. Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. You got another one for us, Jeff? You want to, want to take well, I was I one? was just going to take team because I believe that question was what to do in my business right now. Mm-hmm. I would just add to that what we've already talked about. You guys, if you've heard me talk before, what are your non-negotiables in your business? If you haven't set them, get them set systematic approach to those non-negotiables and that's going to set you apart from everybody else that's out there trying to do the same thing the second thing i'll add and we started at the top of this meeting with this question about leads and the marketing cole i believe you share my thoughts on this i grew up in the mortgage business running any any and every type of of lead there was partnering with agents who do leads Mm -hmm. that's my cup of tea i'm really good at and i will tell you I believe it is the most inefficient way to try to build your business. Mm -hmm. 
-hmm. And it creates a roller coaster because you work all these leads, work them 10 hours a day for 10 days. You get one client, you go out and show them, you quit working your leads. So now you got to go redo that again. Mm -hmm. Be the lead generator. Mm -hmm. It'll be so much less expensive if you figure out how to do it right? Growing your database. How are you going to go out? Are you doing community events? Where, where can you go get the same leads that you could pay Zillow $2,000 to get 30 people? Mm -hmm. How about instead of paying them 2000, spend no money and go out and find 30 people, right? So I'm not telling, I'm not giving you the blueprint to do it. I'm just saying really wrap your mind around that. Mm -hmm. If you figure out how to collect the data, you become the king of that. And you're not a slave to somebody else's ad spend. Mm -hmm. Love that. So, Love that. Yeah. And that's, that's getting real on social media. I remember years ago, I, I, I had an agent reach out to me and want to partner with me all because mm -hmm. I posted on Friday at 4.48 PM. I'll still remember that time for the rest of my life that I was driving to a title company to pick up loan docs and bring them back to our closer so we could close the loan. Mm -hmm. And the agent reached out and said, if you will do that for a closing to not have to go to Monday, that's the type of guy I want to work with. Yeah. I, like that was just being real. This is what I'm doing. I'm being real and authentic of who I am. I didn't reach out to that agent. That agent is the only time an agent's ever reached out to me based on a post. So get out there, be, be visible in your true authentic self. Mm -hmm. I love that. I love that. Okay. So we're just, cool. wrapping up. yeah. Linda asked, we are being warned about AI not being safe. Is that accurate or do we need special cautions? Well, here's the thing. AI exists now. It's taking over the world. Point blank. Um, it was a really fantastic um, um, interview with the head of Google. And what Google said is that we need government regulation over it because it's going gangbusters. Here's what I know. It's here to stay. It's not going anywhere. So the biggest thing to understand is get to know what it is. That's the first thing you need to understand what it is, what it isn't and how you fit into that world. I'm doing a lot of coaching on that with my clients on that right now. So Linda, your, your question is really, really great. At the same time, get on the bandwagon because other agents are, and you're going to be left in the dust. So there is a balance between how do you use it to the best of its extent and how do you do it responsibly? I think that's, that's the best way to go. The biggest thing you want to understand is that, is your information truthful? You always have to do a check back on everything you do. And, and we can cover that at a different time. Um, I'll definitely, I think I'll probably need to do a, a, a webinar on it. Would you guys like to see a webinar on uh, all the AI stuff? S say yes in the comments if you want to see. Yeah, okay. <laughs> oh, yes. We want to see it. Okay, love that. So um, I will put together something like that for you. In the meantime, I do want to share something with you. By the way, was it Jeff amazing? Do me a favor, give uh, a little reaction of applause for, for Jeff on, on that would be fantastic. Because we love us. I'll pay you handsomely for that. I just he's I oh, I'm gonna shut down my video and let you take it for the closing. Thank you all for having me and, and sharing time with me today. Great. Thanks so much, Jeff. Okay, for everybody here, one thing I do want to share with you is our website. Yes, we still do have a website. There's a lot of really great stuff on our website. I've got everything from videos to blogs to uh, just all sorts of different information on there that I think you guys could really get a ton out of. So it's just finley-re.com. Love for you to check that out. And if there is anything, I bet there's a QR code for that. Um, so I'll hold up for two seconds while you take a look at that. Or Another thing you can do, if there's something that you heard about today and you'd like more information one-on-one -on -one with it, you can feel free to schedule a business consultation with me. I am so, so, so happy to sit down with you, talk about your business, talk about any of the things that we talk about. It is a complimentary con uh, consultation for anybody who's on this call. It's normally a $350 value. I'm happy to give that away for free for you guys. Simply scan this QR code, okay? Or you can go ahead and put it in the chat here that you would like um, it. Just say me, 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 and I will make sure I take care of you. Gosh, you guys were so amazing. Thank you so much for being with us today. Thank you so much to Jeff. You're always amazing. And for anybody who is watching this recording, we will have more details about everything that we talked about 
inside of uh, the comments here. You can take a look at it below and we will get it all, uh, get you all the information that you need. Thank you, everybody. I hope you have a phenomenal rest of your week. I'll see you next week. Okay.